Lamar Odom trending again today. Some of us call him a basketball legend. Others call him a reality star. But no matter what you know him from, we are all captivated by the tragic story of his being found unconscious at a Nevada brothel overdosed on drugs. It looked grim for Odom in the first few days, but trending right before the show, reports said that Odom may be coming out of his coma. Here to discuss is someone who has a unique perspective on this situation, uh, someone who's been inside the world that Lamar, Modem has, Lamar Odom has been struggling to get free from, and that is Alexandra Dadig. Welcome, Alexandra, to the show. Good and you probably say you. Alexandra, but I always say Alexandra because I have a friend named that, and she's very particular about it, so it, like by default. So anyway, it's Alexandra. It's a wonderful name. I always thank my parents for it. It's very pretty. All right. First of all, tell us about your journey and why, what you know about this world that he is uh, trying to get out of. Well, first of all, Lamar Odom uh, is, uh, you know, he overdosed, you know, and, and the Bunny Ranch is treating this whole thing uh, like he partied a little too much. You know, and that's not reality. I mean, he really hit the ground hard. Mm. He was in a coma. He was on life support. He was just taken off life support. And um, he just started saying a few words. I just read it on, on, on mm -hmm. online. So, um, but you know, from my perspective, I'm in recovery from addiction 17 years. I now campaign against adult youth and child sex trafficking mm. because I'm a human trafficking survivor myself. And I work at the policy level on that issue. Um, I entered politics in 2001 and had the honor to work with a California state senator and LA City Councilman who did the commendations for the city of Los Angeles for the Lakers ev for every championship. Hmm. So I was invited into the inner circle by Dr. Jerry Buss, hmm. which is how I met Lamar Odom when I went to the Lakers training camp in Hawaii and I went to all the games and we were always with Dr. Buss, the former owner of the Lakers mm -hmm. who had passed away. But I can tell you right now, um, if Jerry Buss saw what was going on right now, he, I mean, he's turning over in his grave. Mm, it is outrageous. Know. You know, I never saw that kind of behavior around the Lakers ever mm -hmm. in the 10 years that I was around that club, never ever did you hear about stories like this. Hmm. All right, well, um, he was an addict, ripe for the picking really at the brothel, and the girls who tempted him with drugs, um, they, you know, could then prey on him and make money off of him. I mean, that's right. the way it works. So, do you think that this is the way the brothel ordinarily operates and that this media exposure is a good thing for the brothel in the long run? Well, unfortunately, I know this from a, from a first-hand account because when I was 19 years old, I was approached by a pimp. And even though the first time I escaped that pimp, later on, a few years later, I, I ran into the hands of Heidi Fleiss. Mm. Um, I was around that situation for about nine months and I realized how much trouble I was in because I became a hardcore drug addict. Mm. I got involved in that business because my choice was either homelessness or putting food on my table and helping my little brother go to school. So I, you know, for me it was not really a choice. Um, but I found myself in so much trouble and so afraid because they, the clients were being, being given huge amounts of cocaine. Heidi Fleiss is an advisor to the Bunny Ranch. He wants her to run a brothel. So if you're, if you're asking me what the methods were that he's using, look, Lamar Odin is a known addict. He, they were aware that there was something going on with him. They knew that he was a drug addict. Mm. So you're gonna tell me that girls are in the room with him for four days and, and, and they didn't do drugs with him? Should they have turned him away? They should have turned him away. Did they ever turn people they should like give him away? His, they should give him his money back right now. They have no business keeping that $75,000 that and they yet, took from him. After the Kardashians kind of pounced on him, he came back and basically told them where they could get off. He's he, not having any pity here for this I family. I know, I know. He, you know what, he told Khloe Kardashian to go to hell. Mm -hmm. But what he doesn't realize is that a, a lot of young men and women, the definition of hell is what he does for a living. Mm. Mm. Really. Wow. All right, uh, so, so do you think that long term, if Lamar is to survive, do you think the chances of him coming back normal, of course, are probably not that good. Do you think that Chloe and the Kardashians will probably stand by him, or do you think that he'll probably be on his own? What do you think, what's your prediction if you, if you had to guess? Well, unfortunately I can tell you this from a first-hand account also. Thank God I'm okay today, but when I first got sober, um, I had brain damage, and I, I had to read books out loud for two years just to learn how to talk again. Mm. So, but you know, really and truly, there's a saying in recovery that says, in five years you get your marbles back, in 10 years you learn how to use them, and in 15 years, you might not want him, you know? But, but uh, it takes a long time to 
feel like you're functioning again and you really have to take yourself out of that environment where all the social triggers are because those triggers are going to make you weak they're, because you're talking about lack of impulse control mm -hmm. so when you're losing your impulse control something else is in the driver's seat and and who you are and who the, the survival mechanism in you is and that person in the driver's seat that addict the addict just wants more that doesn't matter if it's going to kill you. The addict wants more. And that's what Lamar Odom was going through. It's a very lonely, isolated path addiction. Mm -hmm. And we don't understand it because it's very personal for every addict. You know, there's child molestation with a lot of human trafficking survivors. They, you know, a lot of the research shows that 70% of young women who end up in trafficking, like that bunny ranch, you know, they end up in sex trafficking or the sex business, mm -hmm. that 70% uh, of those, those women have been molested as small children. So is he better off, if he does make it through this, is he better off to get out of that world entirely and like slip into obscurity? Absolutely. Well, he should be in a treatment uh, facility like perhaps the Betty Ford Center or Hazelden is very credible. Check in there for a year and get solid recovery. Mm. Just abandon everything else and give yourself a chance at life because it's not going to work any other way. And you got to stay there and work with your therapists and your doctors and you've got to slowly get weaned off of this terrible thing we call addiction. It's not going to work any other way. It's a long-term commitment for life. How's your journey? It's up and down, you know, it's up and down, it depends. I, I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by some terrific people in my life. I'm loved and, um, and I, that's what it really comes down to. You have to attract the good people in your life. You have to recognize who they are and you have to hold on to them and cherish them in every way that you can. And you got to keep working your program. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't think, you know, the hardest part I had to learn in recovery is I thought I knew something. Mm. But I don't know anything. I never know what's going to happen the next day or how it's going to affect me. So I better work, work my program strong. And also trauma-informed treatment is really important for survivors like me because oftentimes we go into treatment and we get injured by the standard treatment models mm. because we've had trauma, because we, are, we have similar uh, symptoms, uh, PTSD similar to that of All combat right. veterans. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, very, it's a very difficult web to untangle, mm. but it's possible. And we just can't allow people to, to shame us and ridicule us into silence. And a lot of the, the, the women that come out of this and a lot of addicts that come out of addiction have a deep sense of shame. So that's why they go back into addiction because they don't think that anybody really understands what drove their addiction. Mm. So you really have to get back in that, in that right place and, and right. deal with it very specifically. It sounds like it's not a one size fits all sort of not cure. At all. Not at all. Not at all. It's the farthest thing from it. It's a very personal journey. Well, Alexandra, thank you so much for thank being you, with us. And up next